What's this then? Stool sample. Little black box. That's what it says. So, stool sample. Better open this up and see what's inside, shall we? Let's have a go. Put it on my hand and see if I can find a st Oh, one of those stools. Yes. Oh, goodness me, I should have thought about it, of course. Well, it is a stool sample. And it is a stool. And I thought I'd look through my collection looking at other things that you sit upon. Sit upon toys. Novelties. Gadgets. That's one with a double meaning, of course, which I won't go into. Now, the one I've got, which is actually the only one I could actually sit upon because it's big enough, is this one here, which a friend of mine gave me about five years ago. Look at that. Made of cardboard, very tough. Won't take tons of weight, but it'll certainly take a, an adult to sit on it. And it's all made of cardboard and collapses very small. Very clever idea, and it just like that, it rolls across the table, which you don't want to do, but it's actually a sitting table. And to close it, I've got to undo these bits of velcro at the side, if I can get into them, and then see if we can collapse it. One there, and one here. Woohoo! Isn't that quick? Isn't that neat? There's my chair. Well, my stool. Hmm. Very clever. Well, well, well. Now, there's a stool you could get, which is the same size as that, but it's going to be a bit too expensive for me, so I thought I'd just show it to you. This is one where you have this one the same size as this, but it's made of silver. Well, it's got a silver finish to it, but there's something very clever about it. And the trouble is it's going to cost me, if I buy it, £1,200. You'll see why, because it's made by this wonderful man out of America who makes this extraordinary effect. A crinkly effect, love it, like that. This is the same thing with a stool. Look what happens when you sit on it. And I'll show you a person doing just that. That's what it does. Let me show you the person actually carrying it out. I think he's the inventor in this one. He approaches the chair, he's got it in, next, in his, in his um, living room. There's a stool, the same size as this crinkly one I've got, and that's what it's like when you sit upon it. But it's a bit much for me to pay £1,200 for one of those. But still, if I ever win the pool or some, someone gives me a gift, I'll perhaps buy them. Wonderful idea, that. Something that I long to have but haven't got. Ah, oh, well, ah, oh, well. And here's a funny stool. Yes, it's one of these little um, rickshaws. I think they're very, very common in Hong Kong. It doesn't work very well because it's about 40 years old. But it should have a figure in there, which I haven't got. What's nice about it is it's battery operated, there's batteries inside there, but the batteries don't turn the wheels and make his legs walk, but he doesn't do it very well, unfortunately. He doesn't act like that. He pulls across the table and sometimes he goes backwards too. And someone there sits in the passenger seat and enjoys their ride through the streets of Hong Kong. What an extraordinary idea. Wonderful one. If I find a good passenger for it, I'll perhaps show it again. Yeah. There's one here which is um, a bit dodgy. It's supposed to be choice tickets at the theatre, for seats at the theatre. And that's just what it is, except it's, of course, mm, not what you quite expect. Yes, it's, um, I'm afraid it's a bit of um, toilet humour. Yes, they're in the bathroom, of course, but they do say they're, um, you have to reserve them, use them only on the day, and they're taxed, and they're making fun of the fact that it's not a theatre seat. But you normally sit on to watch the theatre, you have to go to the bathroom in the interval or something like that. But nice idea to make a little joke about it. I thought it was very, very sweet. I, I like that. Now, here's an extraordinary one, which I would never be able to afford to have, I don't think. It's, it's a settee. And you've probably come across many people who have settees in their living room. When the guests spend the night, they convert this into a bed. If it's a couple, they have a double bed. Or if it's two twin beds next side to each other. But this one, when you start to put it out, does something quite extraordinary. What's going on here? And the final picture is, it's two bunks, good heavens, one upon the other. And yet it all started like that. Isn't that incredible? I saw that in the papers about 10 years ago, and I thought, what a wonderful thing. Probably cost thousands to buy, but what a brilliant idea. Instead of a bed, double bed, from a city, quite common, it makes a bunks, two bunks. And I used to sleep in this, incidentally, when I was a child with my younger brother. Bunks exactly like that. <laughs> now we've got proper rocking chairs. We go from sofa beds to rocking chairs. 
and we find there's some lovely ones made by Sekiguchi in Japan about 30, 40 years ago, and it's Grandpa and Granny. I've got to wind them up to make them try and sort of work, and their hands should go nit, 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 but they're a little bit, a bit slow to do it now. Ooh, I think, let's see if it does it even higher. No, I think she's given up knitting. And he's supposed to be looking in with his pipe and little bits and pieces. He's lost his glasses, unfortunately. He's got to go to the optician to have it there. But they rock gently back and forward. Well, I'm afraid the motors be wound up, but they don't rock. They do actually lock and rock without being, without being motorised for quite a long time because they're so nicely weighted. But a brilliant bit of design work for miniature toys from Sekiguchi, and I do love their stuff. It's so extraordinary. And then there's an extraordinary chair, the biggest chair I've ever seen, and it was um, made about 10 years ago. It was uh, by a big, big company to promote themselves on a, on a beach resort on the south coast of England, put up in 2012, it was a 20-foot high deck chair, would you believe? They put it up overnight with a crew of 10 people and had cranes and lifting things to put it together. And just before they let the public in, they put a ladder up and let these people perch on the top for a photo call. The biggest deck chair in the world. And the beach behind it, of course, would be full of loads and loads of normal size beach, beach, beach chairs for sitting in the sun. It's something you see a lot of, but that one is just out of this world. It's so huge. Then a few years later, Seki Gucci came up with a nice pair of slightly larger rocking ones, Granny and Grandpa's again. And these ones are rather sweet because they do work and they're actually motorised with a little one of these musical boxes. So we'll set him sit, go in and see if it works. There we are. Put his arms in the front so he's, looking so he's really relaxed and things. And it's going to go tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. He and his wife, there's about 160 years of life there, both in their ages, I expect, like that. And they both rock away like that, very, very nicely, very sweetly. Rocking chairs, done by Sakiguchi, and they're charming, I think. So, lots of seats, and lots of more seats to look for, I think. But these are the, I think, the nicest. Do you like them? <laughs>